Hey, it's a gearbox assembly video. Not going to show the whole thing, but uh, I'll stop at points here as I go. So I've got the, this is basically the input shaft. The drive gear rides on here. It spins this set of wheels. This drives another set of gears, which transfers power through this tumbler, through this shaft, through this tumbler, to this shaft, which is another set of gears which will transfer eventually to the gear here, which is on the lead screw for the output. So, just uh, something I noticed as I go along here. I've got the book, the, uh, the Ilion book, which is very good, by the way, but um, it does cover a lot of models, and there were a few changes along the way. One thing that I noticed with this one specifically is, in the book, this is held in with a taper pin. On mine, this is set screws. And something that I found out, you know, after I fought it off of there, it's a double set screw. There's, you know, this set screw here, you remove it, and there's another one underneath of it. It just tightens on a, you know, simple flat down there. So nothing, nothing special about it, but, you know, if you have one of these things and you loosen this here set screw and wonder, why will this not come off? Well, you got to take it out and then get the screw underneath of it loose. Otherwise, it's not going to go. Um... See, this all works. This gear here is key to the shaft, and these two run independent of it, which is how the gear reduction from the extra tumbler here works. So as I get a little further along, I will make another video. Okay, so take two on this one. I'm just not going to show you the first ones, uh, otherwise then you know why I screwed up. So I've got the center shaft in with the compound gear assembly and the cone gears. First time I put this in, I had this gear backwards. You can see that there's a taper pin right there that locks this whole stack to this shaft. Well, if you have it on backwards, the taper pin is over here instead of here. The shaft ends up sticking out that way and it doesn't quite work right. So I had to take it all back apart and put it back together again. And uh, putting this thing together, let me tell you, is not the easiest in the world. So these this entire stack of gears rides on a key on the shaft in the middle of it, so they're all locked together. These are not keyed, but they mesh within here. So as you're feeding this shaft in, you have to get it past all this, then into the first gear here. And right about that time is when the key comes into back here. So you're fiddling with aligning the gears here with the shaft, meshing them in here and getting the key back here lined up with the keyway in the uh, in the gears as you go so it's kind of like cracking a safe to assemble this bad boy but once it's together it, it does go okay I guess it's mildly frustrating but anyway these are called the compound gears because it's a compound gear reducer this is the input gear and I don't have the key out here with me so I've got an allen key jammed in there just to make it drive but you can kind of see how this thing works. So the tumbler, which is one of these guys here, picks up whatever RPM you get from this compounding set, transfers it to a shaft here, which transfers it to one of these gears, depending which hole you're in, and that will that gives you your final gear reduction. So this one actually has a total of 70 speeds. It's the wide ratio box. The non-wide ratio box has a set of holes that looks like that, and you got one less of these guys in here. I think it, I think it's this set, and there's one less set here as well, because well, you don't need it. Um, so yeah, I think this one may have one extra as well. I think this gear down here is slightly different. Either that, or it's just the offset's different because of the you know, one less here. So anyway, I'm going to put the tumbler shaft in and show you how the completed gear reducer assembly operates. Okay, so this is the completed assembly. And I don't have the, there's a pair of nuts that go on here to fasten the lead screw in. This is keyed to the lead screw and that's the lead screw itself. Um, you can see it drives off the stack there. I'm not going to leave this in because I don't have really have any handy way to support this. So we're just going to pop that out, and I have to replace the Woodruff key anyway. At some point during disassembly, it went and shot across the floor, and I don't know where it went. That's a thrust bearing there. 
here and the retaining nuts. So that's the whole thing. I also have to replace this. The, uh, the dowel pin bent on me, and then when I tried to bend it back, it broke. So just got that jammed in there to hold the shaft in. That's just a simple roll pin. At least that's not a taper pin like most of the rest of it. So this is it's in gear and a gear anyway. So this is how this all works. So this drives these, which drives this, which drives the shaft, which drives this, which drives that, which causes the temporary key to fall out. There we go. And that, uh, you can't really get the right angle on it. There we are. That larger gear drives that cone stack and then yeah, the uh, that one there is your output. So that's how this whole mess works. So it's not very big either. I mean, I do have the data plate for it. It's just not mounted right now. But there you go. And of course, you know I messed the paint up. You know, fresh paint. First thing you do, screw it up. So there you have it. One wide ratio double tumbler uh, South Bend 10 gearbox.